Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Cherry and White Classics. I'm Kevin Kopp, and tonight we're going to be turning the clock back to the fall of 2015. We've got a doubleheader for you tonight on Cherry and White Classics as we're going to get two races for the price of one, the Men's and Women's American Athletic Conference Cross Country Championships. And to help talk about what we're going to see tonight, we're welcoming in Cross Country Head Coach James Snyder. Uh, James, thanks for uh, taking some time to chat with us. Hey, thanks for having me on tonight, Kevin. Well, first of all, before we get into the race, I should start with some congratulations. Uh, you uh, welcoming... Uh, your son Dylan, uh, just how's everyone doing right now? Hey, we're just catching up on sleep and, um, and enjoying the time with him. But no, fortunately, my, my wife Rachel and, and Dylan are, are happy, healthy, and we're, yeah, hanging in just like everybody else is hunkered down here in Philly and, and enjoying the time with the little guy. Well, that is really outstanding news. Congratulations to you guys. Very, very exciting times. But uh, we're going to turn back to another exciting time here uh, in, in Temple history. Uh, this is back to 2015. We're going to do the men's race first and the women's race second, just as it happened uh, back there in 2015. So let's start by talking about the men's side. And just I'm wondering if you can give us a little bit of context. I, I guess, you know, there's no spoiler alert for a five-year-old race, but uh, Temple's going to take fourth tonight. It's going to be the best program finish to that point in history. And we know in the intervening years that Temple has exceeded that mark. But just kind of talk to us about kind of the state of things on the men's side uh, going into that race uh, back in that 2015 season. Yeah, so that team was a pretty unique one where we had um, kind of a carryover of some boys who, who had been on the roster when I arrived here. Um, and then also kind of an influx of our, our first real freshman class um, that came into that group. So, you know, Matt and, and Alex um, were two guys who were here when I arrived, did a great job in our program. Um, along with Will Malton, those guys were all, all in the top five that day with, with Matt and Alex earning all conference honors. Um, our number three guy, Stefan Listebart. Um, was an Austrian boy who was actually our, our first international student on the men's side that we'd ever recruited. So that was sort of a kind of sign of things to come, laid the, the groundwork for a guy like Mark Steinsberger to come a few years later, and then current guys on the team, Anton Christian, even with some of our recent signees where, where we've been able to attract some folks from overseas. Um, another interesting, I guess, piece of that race, Johnny Conley um, was a two-year captain for us at the end as a true freshman. Ended up being our number five guy that day at ECU. Uh, so to finish fourth as a team, uh, I believe we were sixth the year before, and then we might have been eighth two years before. Um, so we were kind of closing the gap and, and narrowing down on on getting better as a program. But it was a uh, yeah, it was a it was a fun meet. It was an exciting exciting time. Um, like I said, I was talking to a couple of the guys about it as we were getting things rolling, and just funny that the the things that people remember, um, you know, five years later, four and a half years later. Um, about that race, but it was a it was a good step, and I think a, a prelude to what was to come as as our team continued to grow and improve. Well, and we should tell you that uh, one of the uh, cool things about tonight's broadcast is after each of the races, we're going to get to talk to one of those student athletes, and after the men's race, we will catch up uh, with senior captain Matt Cation. And after the women's race, as we shift our focus, uh, we will talk to Blanca Fernandez. And and James, this is one. Uh, that has to be uh, kind of burned into your memory. Uh, Blanca becoming the first woman ever to win a uh, cross-country conference title for Temple, uh, taking first place uh, on the women's side. Uh, just one of the great historic moments, uh, really, in, in Temple history. And I'm sure to, to be a part of that and, and to witness that and, and her spectacular 2015 season was, was really uh, fun for you. Yeah, that, that was an awesome year for Blanca. Um, you know, she had arrived here mid-year January the year before. So it was January 2015. Um, and she went on, on the indoor championships in 15, the outdoor championships in 15, and then um, at the cross-country championships in 2015 as well. So to, to go and earn three All-America honors in one calendar year uh, was, was really impressive. And she was our, our first and only, um, even to this date, conference champion in cross-country. So it was a a huge, huge day for her. Um, and we look back at it, um, kind of, it was the, the midst of an undefeated season for her. So she ended up after this winning the regional championship over at Princeton um, and then following that up with, with an all American finish at NCAA. So an undefeated regular season, um, kind of similar story with, with that group. I mean, Blanco was our, she was actually our first international student um, that I had recruited to Temple, um, male or female. So that, laid the groundwork and the foundation for folks like Millie, folks like Alina, um, even Alana Lally, who are on our roster now. Um, Blanco was kind of a trailblazer in that regard and really, yeah, kind of opened up our, I guess, opened up our campus to, to Europe and um, was a fantastic uh, leader in our program and, and obviously 
an awesome, awesome athlete who's, who's still training to this day. So I don't know if you get a chance to talk with her about what's to come next, but um, she's certainly somebody who's still logging the miles, still putting in the time and um, was obviously, like I said, historically speaking, the best cross country runner um, that we've ever had in our program here and, and one of the best athletes in Temple history for sure. Well, you mentioned the word foundation, and, and that's something that, that will come up and you'll hear from both Matt and from Blanca. I think they're really proud of, of helping to set that foundation. You can tell that they have followed the program closely as alums, that they're taking a lot of pride in the continued success and development. And so, you know, we'll kind of bring it into the present now. And, and with the benefit of four and a half years of hindsight on this race and everything that's come you know, since for this program, I think it's fun to, to look back at this as kind of a jumping off point, but I, I think you really said it, that, that this kind of then sets the table for all of the, the explosion of, of talent and, and uh, recruiting and, and growth that we've seen on both sides, men's and women's in this program in recent history. Yeah, absolutely. Spe speaking of growth, I think this quarantine beard, I'm, I'm channeling my inner Matt Cajun from that day. I, <laughs> I haven't got a chance to see him in a while if he's, if he's still rocking the big beard. It's still robust. I can promise you that. <laughs> there you go. So I guess uh, he lives on in our program in that way too. But um, no, those, like I said, any, anytime you're a new coach coming into a program, um, guys like Matt, Alex, Will Malton, um, it's always a challenge to kind of get them to buy into your philosophy and, and believe in doing something different than they had done before. And I'll say for all those folks that, that were here when I arrived, um, that transition was a lot smoother than I ever imagined it could be. And Every year we've continued to get better. And um, what I've always talked to, to our current team about is, you know, leave it better than how you found it. Um, make sure that you're doing things in our program um, that leave a foundation that, that we can grow from. And I think guys like Matt, Alex, Will, um, all the way through Johnny Conley on the men's side, Blanca, Katie Leischer, all the way up through um, Ashton Dunkley and our current team. Um, every year, I think people buy in a little bit more. Um, and I'm really excited, too, with the freshman class we have coming in. I mean, on the men's side, we're bringing in 10 boys next year, um, the, the largest and most talented group we've ever had. Um, and I'm hoping those folks get a chance to tune in tonight, too, to, to see a little bit of what, what came before them. Um, but looking at, you know, leaders that have come through our program on the men's side, we're graduating so many guys this year. You know, Kevin Lipsansky was a, a captain for us. Um, Zach Seeger, Donovan Mears. Donovan, that next year, kind of followed in Johnny's footsteps and as a true freshman was our number five guy. Um, so, you know, knowing that it still means something to those folks uh, means the world to me. And uh, like I said, I think that's what's what's the big piece of college athletics, right? Like getting the chance to, to make it something more than just the individual and believe in something that's bigger than yourself. So um, I'm hoping everybody gets a chance to tune in and watch and, and check us out. Uh, it's incredibly well said and it's been evident. Uh, from what we've seen in this program in the last couple of years, and for a multitude of reasons, we are looking forward to seeing you back out on the course in 2020. But uh, Coach Snyder, thanks for taking some time to chat with us about some great 2015 memories. Thanks so much, Kevin. Hope you guys enjoy the race. All right. So without further ado, we're going to send you down to Greenville, North Carolina, the 2015 American Athletic Conference Championship. It's the men's 8K up first. The women's 6K will follow here on Cherry and White Classics. And there are your leaders, and that's Scott, our pre-race favorite, and Barraza. And Barraza just strolling along off the shoulder of Scott there. And our field rounding around the lake before they head into the back loop here at Lake Christie. Beautiful temperatures in the low 50s today. This is perfect race conditions for our field. Also in our field today, the University of Cincinnati, led by Toby Loveridge. He finished 10th in his race at pre-nationals with a time of 2014, a chance to break into our top five today. Their team was 18th at pre-nationals in the black race. The East Carolina Pirates are host school eight miles west of here in Greenville, North Carolina. We are in Grimesland, North Carolina, and the Pirates are led by Jorge Montez who also finished in the top 10 last year, had a nice run at Wake Forest earlier this month, ran 25-46. The Memphis Tigers in our field, led by Quarantine Lewis. University of Southern Florida's Michael Babines, another runner to watch. He was second at the USF invite, third at the FSU invite earlier this season as a team, the University of Southern Florida Bulls. Temple Owls, 12th in the Mid-Atlantic region, another team we expect to compete for a top three finish here today. A very strong one, too. Alex Azuski and Matt Casey on.
Both ran well at Paul Short, where their team finished 16th. And as I said, they're ranked 12th in the Mid-Atlantic region. The green wave of Tulane, as we see a very dense field hitting into the back loop. Moses Aloui, who ran 24-39 at pre-nationals, anchors the green wave of Tulane. He finished 24th, and his team finished 24th at pre-nationals. And that's our men's field, nine teams here in the American Athletic Conference. And here come our leaders. And it's a pair from Houston. And that's Barraza, Brian Barraza, Mark Scott leading that pack. Pack just sitting there. It's a comfortable pace here. As everyone gets the measure of this field. So our pre-race favorites, Barraza and Scott, in the lead, but definitely taking a slow approach to this 8,000-meter race. And really, that field, 15 to 20 runners with the leaders. The ground here is so soft that it does slow down the times, even though the course is notably flat as they go into this back loop. They'll do two big loops here at Lake Christie for 8,000 meters, just a shade under five miles in our men's championship race. Mark Scott. There he is, your leader. Barraza sitting very, very nicely on the inside of that pack, and they're just strolling along here. Both these gentlemen, Scott and Barraza, have come under 24 minutes for 8,000 meters this season. And Tulsa had that big run at Wisconsin. All their top five finished under 25 minutes. But you can see three from Houston in that lead pack, and Tulsa's top five all in that lead pack. Tulsa running one, two, six, seven, and nine. So Tulsa here to defend their title from 2014. And that's Mark Scott. In the lead, but Scott running very comfortably with his teammate. Where are they in the race? Do they know where they're passing? Up there with Brian Baranza, that looks like James Broussard. Also from Houston, spoke to Steve Mangus. Magnus today, Brian Barraza's coach. He said he's really rounding into form. So here we are coming into the two-mile mark. You can see a slight downhill as they go around behind the starting line and back into this loop. So it's a basically two and a half mile loop here. And now for the first time, a little movement up in the front. And we'll see if Barraza can cover this move by Scott. Still very early on in this race. And then we'll rise up this little hill here. And there's Barraza covering the move by Scott. Scott patient through the first two miles. Wanted to see who wanted to run with him. And it looks like our pre-race favorite, Scott and Barraza. 
will go mano a mano on this second loop back behind them the field Tulsa still in command as a team as that chase pack has three scores to go along with Scott a very very close race for second and third here in four or five teams who can touch that Tulsa though firmly in command of the team race as we hit into the second loop And you can see the grounds there of Lake Christie. A beautiful facility here. Parker Overton and his crew doing an amazing job getting this in shape. It was saturated with water, as I said, just a few days ago with another round of rain, but completely drained out now. Soft in a lot of places. But an absolutely beautiful setting here for the 2015 American Athletic Conference Cross Country Championship. Women's race. Will be coming up next slightly different configuration for that 6,000 meters and you can see the gap there and the strength of tulsa in that chase pack as that's their number two three four and five so all their scorers really in striking distance of the leader and barraza and scott have backed off a little bit from that initial breakaway and now tulsa with three in the top four So the Golden Hurricane, Steve Gully, the coach, and they're running really well, rounding into form. Some young talent taking over for some departed all-conference members of last year's squad and having no trouble here at Lake Christie. And they'll emerge out of this wooded, gladed section of this course and round back around the lake and head back into the back loop. And right as they do that, they'll hit the 5,000 meter mark and we'll get you an unofficial split. We are about 12 minutes as they come to about the 4,000 mark. So they're running roughly about 15 minute pace for 5,000 meters. So that'd be a roughly about a 24 minute 8,000. And again, as I've said, Tulsa had all their top five under 25 minute. Barraza and Mark Scott have both dipped under 24, well under 24 at that. And several runners have flirted with the 24-minute barrier. Difficult to compare cross-country courses. This one's certainly flatter than most cross-country courses. But the soft grass footing here and all the turns do slow down the runners. Tough to get a rhythm going. But Barraza and Scott setting the pace here as they round around the lake. So there's Scott, the leader, Barraza, just shadowing him. Well coached by Steve Magnus. Magnus, of course, a high school star out of Houston, now the coach at the University of Houston. And Scott there decides to press his advantage and see what Barraza can do as they approach the 5,000 meters. A big win for Scott at the Wisconsin Invite. He was named U.S. Track and Field Coaches Association Runner of the Week after a dominating performance at Wisconsin. And you can see him starting to pull away from the very talented Barraza as we head into the last few thousand meters of this race, almost about two miles left. And Scott trying to put away the individual title as the Tulsa Golden Hurricanes 
are putting an exclamation point on this 2015 season. We were interested to see how they would respond after losing several key members of their squad last year, but they have reloaded, and they're here once again to try to win a 2015 American Athletic Conference championship. You can see the beautiful setting here at Lake Christie. The host school, East Carolina, doing a great job putting on this 2015 event. Tulsa played host last year. And now they're in North Carolina doing the same thing, which is dominating this field. And Mark Scott's run of success continues. He was your Chili Pepper Invitational champion, the Wisconsin individual champion, and as he goes through 5,000 meters, he is showing you why he wants to repeat as the American Athletic Conference champion. Barraza shadowed by two of Scott's teammates. So Tulsa now, and there was Scott checking his shoulder, see what kind of distance he's put on. And this is a really nice tactic in cross country. Slow start, throw in a surge. And there was Scott kind of grabbing his side a little bit. Maybe a slight stitch here as he's really pressed hard to try to drop this field. But Scott still looking strong. Arm carriage is good and turnover still quick here as he hits the 16 minute mark. Trying to use those little downhills to surge a bit. And right now, he's got a nice 100-meter lead on second place. Maybe a 60-meter lead. And now his teammate set up on Barraza in second. So Tulsa, again, two runners to join Scott in the top four. Some very low marks here for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. And this chase pack, a long way away from the next pack back, And now the two from Tulsa overtaking Barraza. He needs to hang on and maintain contact and hold on to that fourth position. But right now, what a performance by Tulsa. One, two, three with less than 3,000 meters in this race. Probably about 2,000 meters. They should be hitting the 6K mark here in just a moment. And I think these two from Tulsa are closing the gap somewhat on Scott. And there's Tulsa's fourth runner in the background. So they're top four, all in the top six. That's Toby Loveridge of Cincinnati. That was, I believe, Michael O'Donnell from University of Connecticut. There's Scott. He'll be coming around. The backside of this course and behind the start finish line once again. And Sparaza still holding on to two from Tulsa, who are chasing Scott, your leader. Quick scores, unofficial quick scores, of course, from the field at about 5,000 meter. Tulsa, of course, dominating with about 22 points. University of Connecticut with 90 points. And then third place, wide open. Temple, maybe an edge there for third place, but the field very dense as we look for those fourth and fifth scores. But as we predicted the race, Tulsa with 22 points at 5,000 meters, of course, unofficially. There's Mark Scott 
and you can see the distance that he's put on the field. We've got about 1,200 meters remaining in this race for Scott. And Scott looking very strong. And behind him, you'll see two of his teammates. Scott with under 1,000 meters to go, about 800 meters. And he'll go back through the woods, round the turn, and kick downhill for a slightly downhill finish. The clock just over 20 minutes. And that's Connecticut trying to cement the second place team performance and there's Scott making his way through that gladed section of the course about 300 acres here at Lake Christie home to a number of national class water skiing events. But today it's the men's 8,000 meters at the 2015 American Athletic Conference Championship. And there's the finish. And you can see that long gradual downhill. And Scott will round that. It's about a 400 meter gradual downhill into the finish chute. And the race for third place team here is still very close. As most of our fourth and fifth runners, they're rounding behind that start finish line now. And that will be the deciding factor for our podium places here at the 2015 American Athletic Conference men's 8,000 meter race. That's Yukon's fourth and fifth coming through the woods there. <laughs> and our spectators anxiously awaiting Barraza, excuse me, waiting Scott of Tulsa. It should be coming into sight in just a minute. And there he is, cresting that hill, and then he'll roll down into the finish chute. No problem with this field. 2014 American Athletic Conference champion will be your 2015 American Athletic Conference champion, Tulsa's Mark Scott. This will likely be a season's best 8K mark for him. And one of the last 8Ks he run is he shifts to 10K for the remainder of the season. And again, you can see Tulsa's strength up front. They're going to go one, two, three. Barraza will pick up the fourth spot. And there's Mark Scott unofficially about 23-27 for Scott. Looks comfortable coming through the finishing shoot. And he'll be pleased with his teammates' performance behind him as they go 2-3. And there's Barraza from Houston. Nice performances by Tulsa. Tulsa's fourth runner now in the shoot. And now UConn 
scores there first. It's going to be a nice race for second and third place. Toby Loveridge. Tulsa's fifth runner now kicking down the hill. This will put five in the shoot for Tulsa. And so Tulsa's top five will all come in under 24-30. And that's Jorge Montez of East Carolina, the home school here. And now you can see just how dense this field is, and that's going to make second and third place team a very close battle here. UConn has five in the shoot at this point. in a great race. Lake Christie running fast today. Time at just over 25 minutes now for our men's 8,000 meters. And we'll check Scott's performance and how that stacks up with previous So we welcome you back, Kevin Kopp here. We just finished watching the Men's 8K American Athletic Conference Championship race from 2015, and we are joined now by Temple's top finisher and all-conference honoree from that race, Matt Cation. Matt, thanks so much for uh, taking some time out to chat with us. Yeah, absolutely. So first and foremost, uh, obviously, hope that you're doing all right uh, during this time. It's been a thrill for us to go uh, almost five years back in the rearview mirror and, and get to relive uh, this great day for Temple and a great day for you as well. So uh, I guess let's start, you know, almost five years removed from this race. Do you remember it? Does it, does it stand out to you? What are your recollections of that day? Uh, well, it's funny. Um, uh, Coach Schneider uh, reached out to me the other day in regards to the, the replaying of, of the race uh, on YouTube and uh, the stream essentially. And uh, to be honest, I didn't remember at first. Uh, so I had to do a little bit of digging and uh, actually went back and looked at the course map. And um, obviously it's all coming back to me, um, specifically the uh, the last mile or so of the race and, and, and the, you know, the whole race in general, um, being a little, a little gruesome. Well, let's, you know, bigger picture that 2015 season, you know, it was a, it was an eighth place finish for you. It was a fourth place finish for the team, which at the time was the best finish in program history. Now Temple has obviously gone on uh, to break that mark several times in the last couple of years. But I think we heard Coach Snyder talk about it as really kind of a turning point year for the program. This was your senior season. So, you know, looking kind of beyond this race more broadly at, at how that year went, you know, as you've had the ability to, to look back on it with some distance, do you feel that way, that that, that was kind of a year that was able to, to let the program take that next step? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, ever since Snyder joined the joined the team uh, joined temple came to temple uh, it's it just it got a lot of it became fun you know uh we had solid guys on the team um guys that could really crank out some nice times and uh that race as well as the races leading up to it um and, and now seeing what the guys are doing um today um 
it's impressive um, uh, given given uh, um, that I haven't haven't really been running too much recently. So looking back on those times and, and just being able to remember races like that, um, uh, as well as being on and off the track, um, gets the butterflies uh, moving again. You know, uh, think about the, the competition, the racing, and, and uh, just that feeling of uh, success and running good times is just uh, a definitely a good memory to have. Oh, no doubt. I'm sure it does. And, and, you know, you mentioned uh, the rest of the guys on this team. Obviously, you led the way with, the, with that PR and that eighth place finish. But this was, a, again, to that point, the best showing that, that this group had had as a team. What do you remember about uh, that, that year, obviously, as one of the seniors, just kind of the, the makeup of the other guys on the team? Uh, you know, what do you remember about them? And, and obviously, some of those guys uh, stuck around for the subsequent years and, and ended up leading Temple to, to even higher finishes in the future. As I tell everybody, um, and as we all hear uh, through our time in school, um, especially in, in our collegiate years um, and our career as uh, student athletes, it truly is uh, one of the best times of your life. Um, not that the past couple of years have been have been fun. You know, past couple of years outside of school um, have been extremely fun. Definitely um, uh, years to remember, but definitely uh, being with a team that would that actually cared um, is a big deal. Um, um, and, and being able to train with people who cared, and being able to train with guys who um, truly wanted to do better every time they got their their foot on on the line and every time the gun goes off you, you forget everything and it all comes down to the training and it's it's and it's not the training that you remember um you know it's all muscle memory at that point but what you remember is um the competition between one another um and because we all lived with each other uh we hung out literally every day uh, we still do, uh, for the most part, um, even outside of school, outside of Temple, um, is one of those things that uh, is, it, that's, the, that's the thing that sticks with you. Um, it's, it's not the times. It's not any kind of records that you might break or how well the school does. It's, for me, it was those years running with those guys. So. Oh, Matt, that's incredibly well said as we just yesterday uh, celebrated kind of virtual commencement day, uh, sending off the Temple class of 2020, uh, you know, five years later for you. It's, uh, it's really a thrill for us to, to get to go back and, and relive that great day and, and that great season for Temple. So thanks for taking some time to chat with us. Yeah, absolutely. Certainly. All right, that is Matt Cation. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, it will be the women's race and a historic finish for Temple as Blanca Fernandez captured the first individual cross-country title in Temple women's cross-country history. That's coming up next here on Cherry and White Classics. And there's our women's field for the American Athletic Conference 6,000 meter women's championship. A very nice field assembled for our women's championship as well. And a familiar battle for the team competition as it's once again Tulsa's Golden Hurricane, the ladies this time coming in as our pre-race favorites. But they will have a very, very strong competition from last year's runner-up team, the Huskies, the Lady Huskies of the University of Connecticut. They are led, of course, by defending champion Emily Durgan. She ran 2029 earlier this season at Paul Short. She's one of our favorites to win the individual title, but she will have a very strong competition on her hand, especially from Blanca Fernandez from Temple. She actually beat Durgan at Paul Short, just edged her out by two seconds. Blanca Fernandez from Leon, Spain. She will be challenged by Rachel Baptista of Tulsa. She is the leader of that very talented squad from Tulsa. They were 27th 
at Wisconsin, but don't let that finish fool you. The Wisconsin field was absolutely stacked. 25 of the top 30 teams are ranked in the nation. So finishing 27th, mixing it up amongst the best in the country. The Lady Golden Hurricane, the defending champions, they are ranked sixth in the Midwest rankings. UConn comes in at 11th in the Northeast rankings. Of course, one school you can never count out in the American Athletic Conference are the Mustangs of Southern Methodist University. They were 32nd in that very competitive field at Wisconsin, 13th at Notre Dame. They are led by Chanel Souza, who ran 20:52 at Wisconsin, 17:20 earlier this season for 5,000 meters at Notre Dame. She was third here last season. And the Lady Mustangs, a history of peaking well late in the season. And unlike our men's field, shorter race here, 6,000 meters. So our leaders have a little more room to press hard. Several other ladies in this field could challenge for the individual title. Caroline Reiser of East Carolina, the host school here, was 23rd at Paul Short, but has been running well as of late. And the Lady Pirates a chance also to finish third in this race. A very open field for third place. We do think, as you can see, our leaders there. There's Riser from East Carolina up near the front. And there was Durgan from Connecticut as well. And there's that dense field which will decide our third place team. As we think UConn and Tulsa will battle it out for first. Great shot of Lake Christie. Beautiful course here. Temperature still in the 50s. Perfect running conditions. And you saw just how fast the men's race went. Not a traditionally fast course with the soft ground and the turns, but it's running very quickly today thanks to Parker Overton and his staff. Just under four minutes into this race. And that lead pack at about six, seven ladies here in our lead pack. And Durgan looks to be leading the way. And our field coming into the mile mark. Quick start to this race for our ladies field. And that's why the field behind our chase, excuse me, our lead pack starting to string out already. This quick start on this flat course. And now they're headed back into that gladed section of woods and a slight incline. The only real incline on the course is the hill they run up at the start. And these ladies will go up that three times in this 6,000 meter race. Early stages of this race, we think UConn with a big lead, 79 points very early on just before the mile where we're doing our quick scores. But J.J. Clark's team from Connecticut poised to maybe claim a victory this year after a runner-up finish last season. So as our team hits into the back loop, we have Tulsa at about 115 points, 
30 points behind UConn unofficially are quick scores. So our two race favorites separated by about 30 points in the early stages. Tulsa will be patient here and try to move up in the second half of this race. Tulsa returns a good squad from last year's champion. Four of our top 15 finishers from 2014 back in uniform for Tulsa. And Baptista, as I said, is your leader. She was a bit off the front of the pack, finishing 21st earlier this season at Wisconsin. Ran 20.09. And that looks like our favorites right there, Blanca Fernandez shadowing Durgan. So our individual race is to three ladies here in the field behind them will settle out this close team championship. Six. Southern Methodist, as we said, in third place unofficially as they hit into that back loop, followed by Houston. Houston, a good squad. They were 12th at the Texas A&M Invitational early this year, 31st at pre-nats. They're very strong through three. Maddie Brown, Meredith Sorensen, they're one, two. And if they're fourth and fifth, can close the gap. The Lady Cougars of Houston could steal that third spot. Southern Methodist, as I said, Shannon Souza, Caroline Scatbo, and Holly Archer, they were all top 15 last season for the... Durgan, though, looks comfortable. No change in her arm carriage. Turnover is still strong. So she has a lot of race, a lot of fight left in her. And what a great battle for our women's competition. Our men's competition earlier today, Mark Scott of Tulsa, your champion, put it away after one loop about halfway. In this race, Durgan and Fernandez stride for stride here. And there's your field behind. Tulsa. And Southern Methodist, as we said, known for peaking late, looking strong here as they're moving up through this field. Could pull a big upset off. But UConn and Tulsa both with low marks as we come close to the 5,000 meter marks. There'll be just about two miles left in this race. Excuse me. <laughs> about five minutes left in this race, about 2,000 meters. And a great race here. And now Fernandez makes her move down that hill. And she takes the lead for the first time. Durgan right back with her. Seeds nothing as Fernandez now will press and see what she can do. And there's Durgan taking the lead back from Fernandez. Baptista still a strong third there.
And Southern Methodist continues to look strong in this team competition. Three coming around the back side of the finish line now to the three mile mark. There's your leaders. About a thousand meter remain for Durgan and Fernandez. Still anyone's race here as they head into the woods. A very slight gradual uphill, which they will certainly feel at this pace, at this stage of the race. A wide sweeping turn will head them down that same hill into the finish line. And this is going to be a sprint finish. This race living up to its billing here. It looks like Fernandez getting a step, but Durgan right there. And it's still anyone's race here. Emily Durgan of Connecticut, Blanca Fernandez of Temple. This will be a fast time for both of our top two. Course running really well today as they have made the turn and now 5,600 meters of racing comes down to a 400 meter sprint finish down the hill. A gut check here for Emily Durgan and Blanca Fernandez. See who wants to win this conference championship more And they'll come out of the woods and the crowd gathering up on the finish area to see what will be an exciting finish in our women's cross country championship. In our team competition, there's Fernandez in the individual race, Durgan trying to come back a repeat of Paul Short here. Fernandez kicking. Team competition. Tulsa with an edge over UConn. Southern Methodist now clearly in third. There's Fernandez and there's Durgan. Fernandez checks her shoulder. See what kind of lead she has. And this lead will likely be enough. And a great time. Fernandez a chance to dip under. 20 minutes here. That will be a season best if she can. Durgan also running a season best time. And the Lady Owl from Temple University, all the way from Leon, Spain. She will be your conference champion, Blanca Fernandez. And a big smile from Fernandez. Durgan, a tough, hard fought second place finish for the Lady Husky. Baptista now in third trying to hold on. And you can see her teammates Tulsa moved very well in the second half of this race. And that's Marina Rodriguez Sala of Memphis with a nice finish. And here come the ladies from Tulsa. And then you can see Southern Methodist with that strong one, two, three punch. Scatbo, Archer, and Souza coming into the shoot. Here comes UConn, second and third. Tulsa now with five in the shoot. So the battle between Tulsa and UConn 
starting to look much like the men's competition. But we'll wait for official results on our team competition. But we do believe looks like Tulsa may have got the women's competition as well. A great day of racing here at the American Athletic Conference 2015 Women's Cross Country Championship. And now we have the pleasure of being joined by Blanca Fernandez from Spain. Blanca, uh, first of all, as we just went back and, and got to watch that race from 2015, what a thrill that was uh, to relive your victory. But as we're sitting here in 2020, I know you're in Spain right now. I know that the, the country has been hit hard by the coronavirus epidemic. So just first and foremost, I'm sure everyone that's, that's watching just wants to know how you're doing. Are you doing all right right now? Yeah, I'm doing all right, and my family is healthy, so I think we are pretty lucky. Oh, that's that's great to hear. So let's turn our attention to some some great memories again. As I said, we just watched this this terrific race. It's been almost five years. It'll be five years this fall uh, since you captured the American Athletic Conference title. Looking back on it now, four and a half years later, do you remember that race? What what stands out to you about that day? 
I do remember that race, um, but however, it's been so long. Like, I would love to watch the video again because probably it would bring me all the memories of, and feelings and really the, um, I don't know, the real feeling of that day would come back if I can see the images again. Right now, I just feel, or I remember that I felt a lot of joy and that's always that is always really good so i think that's enough to remember well when you look back at that whole season was so magical i know that was a great day uh, to capture the conference title but to that point you were undefeated in every race that season that continued through the ncaa regional uh race which would come a few weeks later and, and propel you all the way to the ncaa championship so maybe just looking back bigger picture at, at at your season there your last season at temple uh to be able to to go out that way to set the records that you did to to make the history you did are, are you proud of that all the all these years later uh of course and I think I'm even more proud right now, five years later, that at that time. At that time, a lot of things were going on. And I was just training and traveling for another race and another one and another one. And I don't know, I don't think that you are realizing at that moment of the big accomplishment that you are in. It. So um, five years later is like, I don't know. It's hard to explain, but when you grow up and you look backwards is when you really realize about what you did and how big were the accomplishments and how difficult they were. Well, I think you're absolutely right. And that's why this is it's so much fun to, to go back uh, for us to watch and remember as well. And now, obviously, you set uh, Temple history by becoming uh, the first runner to win uh, the American Athletic Conference cross-country title. Uh, the team as a whole did not have its best finish, and, and in the subsequent years now since you've moved on from Temple, we've really seen the program make great strides on both the men's and women's side. We haven't had someone win the event uh, since you were here, but we've had great team finishes, and I wonder if that gives you a measure of pride to kind of have set the tone for the growth and development of this program over the past few seasons. Um, I know. I mean, I don't think I did that but i've been following the temple team uh, on instagram and it's a completely different team the coaches are doing a great job and they are really making a big thing what i mean is at that time we were a young team and it looked like i was a little bit alone on the results but now they are packed and when you are a, a pack inside and out is when the results, the good results come. And there's no one that won that race or that conference title yet, but I'm sure that someone will do it. Like I always say, and I always talk to Snyder about this, the records are made to be broken and I'm just waiting for someone pretty soon to do it and break those records. Well, that's incredibly gracious of you, and, and we really thank you for taking some time. Obviously, we're filming this interview, uh, even though folks are watching it after they've just seen your race, we're filming this interview the, the day before. So I know uh, even though it's going to be extremely late where you are in Spain, I know uh, I'm sure you're, you're looking forward to, to staying up and, and getting to relive this with the rest of us. Um, it's okay. I think it's an effort that I can do, and I'm going to do it like super happy. Uh, so don't worry about that because it's going to be an event that I'm waiting for. Well, that is so great. And Blanca, it is a thrill to catch up with you again. I know that all of uh, Temple fans that are watching tonight are, are glad to see you, glad to hear you're doing so well. And, and we thank you for spending some time with us. No problem. It's a pleasure. Well, that will wrap up tonight's edition of Cherry and White Classics. I want to thank our guests, James Snyder, Matt Cation, Blanca Fernandez. I want to thank you for watching as well. We're taking next week off as Temple is going to celebrate their annual Celebration of Champions, the Stella Awards, uh, where we'll be honoring our student athletes from this past year. But we are back with round two of Cherry and White Classics beginning Friday night, May 22nd at 7 p.m. Stay tuned to owlsports.com. Follow us at Temple Owls on Twitter. We'll be unveiling our schedule for the next phase of the summer. If you've got a suggestion for a classic game you'd like us to play, let us know. Thanks so much for watching. Good night, everybody. We'll see you soon.